forage farming and community vegetable gardens. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Facebook as well as on Twitter. Let's meet our first guest. Khadin, what's your story? Um, yeah. First of all, spent 25 years in prison. I was enrolled at UWST, was arrested for public violence, joined the 28 gang because of the revenge in me, becoming one of the most powerful gang leaders. 1999, decided that I had enough. I left the gang and was released in 2003, trying to afford to contribute towards food and electricity and water. So then I was picked out. I last year got a job here for some stipends. And slowly but surely I, I got that dignity back. And then when we started the garden, like starting my life over again. The garden and the people that I'm working with, we became a family. But for me the most vital thing is that we start growing with the plant. Because for the first time in our lives we earn in something. Not begging. If you choose to build and we'll stay a bigger for the rest of your life. We don't give people fish and we teach them to us. And from his beautiful garden to our loft, we get to introduce you to a man called Mahadeen Wenzel, who spent 25 years of his life in prison. And it was during this time that he found himself surrounded by the world of gangsterism. He became a member of the 28ths when he climbed the ladder to high rank without the gang, or within the gang, in fact. But Mahadeen turned his back uh, on the life of crime and walked away after more than 20 years in the gang. His inspiring story has been subject of books and documentaries, and now he's the senior supervisor for a project called Streetscapes that uses agriculture to create work opportunities for the homeless in Cape Town. Mahadeen, it's good to see you again. How are oh, you? And likewise. It's nice to be sort of in the shade, not in the sunshine of gardening for just no, a little bit. I would bit. rather be in the garden than sitting here on the <laughs> Well, thanks for making yeah. some time for us, dude. Yeah. I'm so inspired by your journey. I, I don't know how a man like yourself goes through what you've been through and turns out to be the absolute gentleman that you are. So perhaps you can unpack your story of how you ended up in prison in the 28th and then got released? Oh, man, in a nutshell, um, I was a law student. I wanted to become a lawyer. And, you know, in the apartheid era, there was, like, um, public violence, so I was part of that. There was a rising at the University of UWC. Um, I was arrested without going to a court mm. and was jailed for two years under the state of emergency law. Then I made the wrong choices. Instead of doing what the others did, just wait those two years, go back to university mm. and just go on with your life. I raised my anger on the white waters, so I start stabbing them. Mm. Um, and my, the only way that I could stab them was to join the gang. So I chose the 28 gang out of the 27s, 26s. I chose the 28 gang. And the more I stabbed, the more they beat the shit out of me, and the more I stabbed mm. them, and it's like a roller coaster. Yeah, of And as I stabbed, 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 I rose in the rank. Mm. Until I, I mean, I got sick and tired of that. Yeah. And so your life had to turn around at some point. I mean, you, a lot of people who leave prison are often not really too sure of where to begin their lives again. Um, and you ended up on the street when you came back. Um, and then something happened in your life, and it doesn't. we don't necessarily need to go into that, but you, you met the, the team from Streetscapes, and so that journey began. W what happened there? <coughs> As a matter of fact, um, yeah. You know, when you, came out, when you come out of prison, even if it's for a short time, we have that honeymoon period where everybody's happy to see you, they have a party, bride, whatever. And then the reality comes, sticking. You have to find a job, you need to support. Mm. And I mean, once you give a guy of 25 years in a gang, mm. top gang leader, once you give him a job. So I mean, it's been tough. Uh, so tough that I ended up on the street. Yeah. Ended up on the street getting very sick. Ended up in the hospital in Somerset West. Mm -hmm. Nearly died of pneumonia. Come back very strongly. Mm -hmm. Got the opportunity at Streetscape to guide Jesse, actually. That yeah. was my point. Just to guide and just to facilitate, um, give guys life skills. But then the green bug bought me, right, and then I became the supervisor of a gardening team. <laughs> a garden which I start from a dump. Yeah. In the Roland State, it was a huge dump. I mean, more mice than anything, yeah. more rats. We had to get rid of the rats. So, and then we start building, uh, making boxes, mm -hmm. getting soil, 
from soil for Africa and then we start planting. And this project has grown and grown and grown and the hope is that Streetscapes will be able to provide jobs for 500 homeless people. I mean that's the dream. That's the target we set for us in 10 years time. We said that okay, we've done it now with 50 people, we've done it with 25 people. Our aim is that in 10 years time we want to employ 500 street people because I mean... How many are you employed now? Um, we have now, I mean, if you, if you count on the management, we are 30 people. That's awesome. So, and you know, Seascape started from that thing, is that, it's not the right that we saw that it's like a roller coaster. The, the people are doing small crimes, petty crimes, and they are put into jail for that. So we had a chat with the justice system and said, no, man, okay, let us try something different. Instead of putting them away and chasing them away, let's use them. And I mean, I saw people grow as the flower, as the, the, the veg grows. Mm, mm. They also start growing. I yeah. mean, we had people that were drug addicts, alcoholics, people that have no sense of life, people that poor society have forgotten about them. Those people are contributing now to society. Mm. They have source numbers, they have bank accounts, mm. and they have IDs. I mean, I don't even mm. have a card ID, but they have card IDs, you understand? Amazing. And they are working now. Instead of begging, they are working. I love it. And that's the message that we want to send out to people. Yeah. And I mean, there's restaurants that use our <coughs> excuse that use the vegetables. And I know these restaurants that use these vegetables are trying to make this more sustainable for you all. And so this is why your work is so important. So no, it's not only about sustainable. Yeah. I mean, we grow organic vegetables. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they all need them. And they need mm. them. I awesome. mean, and in city, we. I mean, now the people that they used to chase away mm -hmm. is the people that are providing a service. Amazing. And this is just the start of the conversation in South Africa. There are many stories like Mahadeen's. If you want to find out more details, go and find out what Streetscapes is up to. They're trying to grow and expand, see how you can go and support them. Mahadeen, thank you so much for coming to join us on the couch today. Pleasure. After the break, we look at another organization that is using agriculture to empower the youth of Kailicha. Plus, we're in the kitchen and Chef Kalem is sharing his version of the South African classic. Guess what it is? A mulva pudding. Stay right where you are.
Clover Classic, the creamy taste that takes you back. Made with love by Clover. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3. I know it's been a while since we've uh, been on the show, so we're going to jam-pack the show today filled with your favorite recipes. And my big question is, what do Mulva pudding, milk tart, and peppermint crisp all have in common? Well, they're all considered South African classic desserts, likely to be found on most local tables during family celebrations, Sunday lunches, and even some parties. Clover wants to share those uh, memories with us and those classic dessert ideas and those memories on Afternoon Express. Express. So to get the ball rolling, Clem will be making us a deliciously sticky mulva pudding. And if you want the details on how to make it yourself, you can SMS the keyword CLOVER to 33650 at a cost of 1 Rand 50. Remember, those free SMSs don't apply, and you'll get all the list of the ingredients right on your mobile device. Let's get started. It is, and this is actually one of my favorite recipes, not just because it's so delicious, but because it's so easy to make. Okay. It really is. So in the bowl over here, I've got some eggs and caster sugar that I've mm -hmm. kind of whipped up. Little you can see it's actually got like super white. Yes. That's what happens when you actually whip the two together. So let's just get straight into it. Next we got some apricot jam. Oh yeah. Because you know that's what's very traditional. I didn't actually know that that's traditional yeah. in your mother pudding. There we go. I've never made one it. before. I've only ever eaten it. So after this one, I'm hoping that you're going to start making it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> there we go. Some baking powder for that lift. Okay. And then some vinegar, also very traditional. The, the reaction with the baking powder and the vinegar, you, you can imagine like your, your little science experiment back at school. Yes, Remember that? Yeah. The two together give you like an amazing like foam. Like almost, yeah. yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen with our mulva. So in goes our flour. Mm -hmm. And and where does Mulva get it? I think it's obviously from cooking it, it becomes that sort of brown yeah. colour, right? You ask me where does the name come from? No. <laughs> Do you know? I was like, maybe someone, Tom Ricard's guy was like, Ex Malfa. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ex Malfa. Ex Malfa, yeah. <laughs> Ex Malfa dessert. There we go. Oh, Malfa dessert, obviously. Cool, so there we go. Done. <laughs> That's a goodie. Just like that. Well and then done. all you need to do is not mess. Okay. That's something I don't know how to do, so you can yeah, carry me on. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Me too. There we go. And that's going to get poured into this. Dish over here, and it goes into the. I think you said the microwave. Let's actually try that later. It goes into the <laughs> oven, and after 45 minutes, you get a beautiful pudding. That looks like, the one like over there. that. And it has Yummy. a very. And it oozes all of that deliciousness. It is. Very simple syrup here of butter, treacle sugar, and clover cream. Oh, yummy. There we go. And you know, you, there's only one way to finish off a marble pudding. Whoop that's cream. clover, classic custard. Oh, there we go. So oh, my favorite. <laughs> there we go. And that's oh, it. Yummy. What's more traditional than I, clover? I'm one of those people who also will have my mulva pudding with my custard, and especially this custard, and then I'll also have just a bowl of the clover classic custard. Done. Just another option. And you can so take those other two home with you as well. Cool. Nicely done. And you really did prove that it's really simple to do, by the way. Um, so really, really cool stuff, Ken. Thank you very much for making this. One of my classics. Make it for your family, dinners at home, perhaps for a celebration. I'd really, really like to know what you guys can create. One winner will get the chance to appear on the Afternoon Express uh, to prepare their Clover Classic custard dish live in studio with one of our presenters. Uh, the lucky guest will also walk away with an exciting Clover hamper valued at 1,000 Rand. Now, entrants must post a picture of yourself holding a box of Clover Classic Custard. You must post a, a prepared dish as well as a short description of what you have made on the Afternoon Express Clover Classic Custard Facebook post. It is on our page. Go find it, Afternoon Express, and go and put those comments there. It'll be absolutely delicious. Can't wait for you guys to see it. It's time for us to get into our recap in case you missed parts of the recipe. Here's how you can make your very own mulva.
Made with love by Clover. Clover Classic, the creamy taste that takes you back. Made with love by Clover. Made with love by Clover. Oh, and there's nothing more delicious than a mulva pudding. It's one of my favorite things on Afternoon Express is getting to eat the delicious food. My other favorite thing is the inspiring conversations we get to have. And today we're highlighting people and organizations that are using agriculture as a way to empower. So we're joined now by Sio Bulela as well as Ondela, who co-founded a project called Township Farmers. Collaborating with youth centers in Kaya Licha, and they've started a number of small-scale organic farms where young people can learn agricultural skills and develop a passion for farming while creating value by growing food to sell to their local communities. Legends, welcome to The Loft. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you. for having Thank us. You. I'm so inspired to see young people actively involved in these arenas. Tell us more about what you guys are doing with Township Farmers. Well, um, Township Farmers is, no, is a non-profit organization that is founded by myself and Sia. Mm -hmm. I think the intro was beautiful. <laughs> you said it even better than we would, actually. <laughs> but what we do is we collaborate with ECD centers yeah. and um, children and youth-focused organizations, and we help them build organic small-scale mm -hmm. farms. Um, in this way, we wanted to have a target market of youth and children, and we wanted to get them involved and mm -hmm. excited about farming. Sia uses this hashtag, uh, making farming fashion. Mm -hmm. So this is basically what we want to do. We want to get kids excited yeah. once again about agriculture and farming. Yeah. So we know obviously in ECD centers, the whole thing is tactile, visual, learning, those basic elements of education which you can do through gardening. But why is agriculture so important for these young people? Why not maths or science? Um, we, we, we believe in that people should be actually, um, the youth should be hands on on the garden, not mm. that they know that the, the vegetables are coming from the supermarkets. Okay. And by doing that, we're making it cool enough for them to be with them on the ground and, and, and scaling so that uh, at the end of the day, the centers are feeding them mm. and they're also profitable for the organiz organizations that they are on. Lovely. Yeah. Talk me through some of the gardens you guys have got. How many are there? I mean, how many programs are you running? What's the big vision and plan? Uh, at the moment, we have three farms that we've already established. Um, the first farm that we did, we started back in February. We started with an orphanage home back in um, Kailicha called Matanwa. Um, and this farm has been an incredible learning experience for myself and Sia. So in these three farms, we have two orphanage homes and one ECD center. Mm -hmm. um, how it started was this particular one is in an orphanage home called Unolungile. And this is the tree that Sia ran with in Asylum um, oh, Cape Town cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. we found a home for it um, in, the, in the orphanage home. So yes, at the moment we only have three running, but I think for the time period that Township Farmers has been established, mm. we've been really trying to push, trying to build more farms, and that is the vis end vision. We want to build as many farms as we can, with the vision of in 2018 starting a um, Township Farmers market, where all of these mark where all of these projects uh, could actually sell their harvest in one safe environment. We can sell them back into the greater community, because right now, for example, the farm in um, Kailicha in mm. Mandela Park is only um, contributing to the Mandela Park community, but we also want to tackle the Kailicha in its whole. Yeah, I so see. that's why we want like the township create farmers a, market. Create an agri -eco economy within Kailicha and the yeah. surroundings. There's hands there, there's uh, commitment, and there's energy there. I think you guys are doing phenomenal work. So if people want to find out more details, don't worry. All those information, all that information is going to be on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Find out about the work that these guys are doing because it really is going to change the way we see our communities looking inside instead of looking outside for these solutions. So thanks for coming to share your story with us. Thank you so much. I know it's short and sweet, but the point is there's so many people doing amazing things in agriculture. Agriculture. So after the break, we speak to an exciting young entrepreneur who has found a way to bring small-scale farmers in rural areas into the 21st century with the power of an app. Plus, we're back in the kitchen with a healthy alternative to an all-time favorite tea time treat, the blueberry muffin. Stay right where you are.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express on this motivational Monday. Uh, so often we're looking for that hungry sort of snack as we're preparing for the end of a day, but we're still trying to keep it healthy at some point. So we find ourselves turning to the trusted and classic brand muffin, but how many of us actually know how to bake one? Admittedly, I don't really know, but thanks to Snowflake's easy brand mix, all it takes is the crack of an egg, a fluff of flour, and the swish of a whisk. And yet it shows us how to make this delicious blueberry brand muffin is the equally delectable Sue and Alan. Hi, Danila. Good to see you again. How's it going? I'm very good, thank you. Good. So, favorite muffin of all time when you give it a Favorite muffin twist. of all time. Mm. Super, super easy. Wet ingredients into a bowl. Okay. So we've got our milk, we've got our yogurt, we've got egg oil. Delicious. So we're going to just get that in there very quickly. So is this oil? That's our oil, there which can go. go in. Thank you kindly. And then egg can and go in. And you can drop in an egg. Mm. This is where I come in with the whisk. The so swish of the whisk or whatever just we call it. We can swish it, yeah. <laughs> we're going to combine, and then thanks to Snowflake and this easy brand muffin mix, which we're going to twist up at the end, oh, so this simple. is literally going to go into our bowl, and you don't even have to overwork it, because you want to keep it quite it's, light and fluffy. Speaking of all that overworking, if you guys want to know all the details, by the way, now that I've remembered it, uh, you can SMS the keyword SNOWFLAKE to 33650, it'll cost you 150 and those free SMSs won't apply, but as simple as that, you'll get all the details on your mobile device on how to make your very own blueberry bran muffins. So that has already come together, see how easy it is, oh, in go out gorgeous. Is that really all it is? It's just this it and is? all of this? Wow. We've added the yogurt, which keeps it beautiful and nice and, nice and fluffy there. and mm. changes the texture. And then we've got our blueberries. We get, so. we get brand muffins at the studio when we arrive. Ooh. So mm, he has a tip for you, Mum Sina. Okay. <laughs> Make us the ones with I love watching you yogurt. guys, how you actually do healthy snack. I've yes. seen it. This goes into our greased muffin dish. Cool. And we're going to bake at 180 degrees for 20 minutes. So we would just continue to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to fill those up pretty okay. easy. And this is our final result. They're beautiful. Moist. Moist. Full of the fiber full, that you need. Full of beautiful blueberries. And see how you enjoy that Delicious. one. Tell me if it's as good as the studio ones. <laughs> Literally as simple as that, you guys have got your very own blueberry bran muffins brought to you obviously by Snowflake with their Easy Mix range. And for another look at the incredible recipe, here's a quicker recap. And join us again next week, Monday, where Sue Ann will be returning to the loft with her whisk in hand to take us on another baking adventure. Mm. Absolutely delicious, and that's right on Afternoon Express. Hope you guys get all the details and make them for your next snack at home. <laughs> now, Liko M grew up in the rural parts of the Northwest and saw firsthand the challenges faced by local farmers trying to earn a living. Her entrepreneurial spirit led her on a path towards founding a company called Made with Rural that helps small scale farmers create economies of scale through group buying and selling as well. And they've developed an app to make life easier for these small scale farmers. Absolutely brilliant concept, well executed, and I think the future of where our economy is going to move forward to when it comes to agriculture. So explain to me how the process works. How do you connect with them? What benefits do the farmers see? Okay. So the farmer just wants to farm, right? So yeah. that's where we, that's our starting point. They just want to be on the farm doing what they love, you know, planting, taking care of their livestock. So how we come in is to say, don't let all that work go to waste. Mm -hmm. Let's sell your produce before you even harvest it. So that's how we bring them onto the program. We get them to register first, and then once they are registered with us, we do all the necessary steps that they need to, you know, to take before they can become market ready. Yeah. So we then approach the, the client and say to the client, we've got a group of farmers that can produce big quantities for your contracts. Because also they, they've got a couple of challenges. There's challenges to how they're going to transport the produce. Mm. So those are some of the things that we take care of to say, if we're going to land that big contract for you, we have to make sure that you are able to deliver in, 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 in the right spec, yeah. you know, in the right truck 
because I mean, if it's big mm. contracts, there's a whole cold chain thing to 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 to, to go about. Yeah. So yeah, so they join the network. We link them to to a contract, and once they've landed that contract, we offer the support on the ground to make mm. sure that the produce is of good quality. The consistency of delivery is also there. Stunning. You know, yeah. Well, one of the issues that they've got, and the reason why you you guys have become so valuable, is the access to resources and information about what clients are looking yeah. for, how to prepare the produce, etc. But then if access to information is a problem, how is an app solved? that because isn't uh, is mobile technology quite you know in inaccessible I mean they're very secluded they're isolated they're far away the farmers that we work with are mainly in the rural areas in the township but yet the expertise um, sits in the in the city cities. centers yeah mm. so you find that at times I mean for a whole agronomist to to move from from there to go all the way to the farms it's it's a little bit strenuous for them yeah. and it's costly also on the farmer side and a rural farmer can't afford some of those services mm -hmm. on their own but if we come together as a group on an on an online platform and say if we have access to an agronomist, then they can be able to assist us as a group because, I, I mean, see. some of the problems are very common. Um, so things like you can be able, you're seeing a certain bug for the first time, for instance, on your spinach leaves, you can be able to take a picture and load it onto the app. Oh, how cool And is then, that? you know, you have access almost in, in um, yeah. tenuously to, yeah. to an agronomist. Is agriculture the future of what's going to help rural communities um, grow and become more self-sustaining? I believe so. Uh, <clears throat> and not only on the commercial side, I mean, just on the nutrition side, you know, to, to feed yourselves, to feed your mind, to be able to become something in, 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 in mm. the world, in, mm. in the community, to be able to, to, to be strong enough to get into whatever industry you choose to. You, you, we need food. Mm. So I believe, you know, we need to go back to the basics. We need to get um, communities farming again, uh, making the right uh, food choices again, you know, to, to grow up into strong, responsible mm. community members and world citizens. Yeah, and what you're giving them the opportunity to do is to get access to that right kind of information. So we salute you at Afternoon Express <laughs> to say thank you for what you're doing for our communities. Let's see this grow because later on in the show we're having a conversation um, about what government is doing to come and support and hopefully more projects like yours will be able to, to come out of the woodwork. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks so much. Yo, Leko okay. is such an incredible human being. Now the amount of work and time that goes into producing fresh food for all of us to enjoy makes farming one of the hardest and most rewarding industries to be in. All we as consumers can do is appreciate the food that is produced for us now that you know how much effort goes into it. So in that light, after the break, we're showing you how to cook the perfect fried egg so next time you're making breakfast, you know you're paying respect to the farmers who produced it.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We are live on SABC3. We hope you're interacting with us across all of our social media platforms today. Guess what? We're back in the kitchen. So now, fried, scrambled, poached, or boiled, soft or hard, how do you like your eggs? Eggs are a family favorite and a kitchen staple. We depend on them for the best start to the day because they are equally delicious and nutritious, and in fact, the most nutritious. But for the next few weeks, thanks to our legends at New Laid, we're taking it back to the basics and we'll be showing you how to perfect the perfect egg. And today we're kicking it off with the perfect fried egg. And here to show us is chef and food blogger Loisom Toba. Welcome to our loft. Welcome, thank you. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. Right, so fried eggs, you must think like, oh, of course I know how to do that. Absolutely. How do you crack it? How hot must the temperature be? Oil, butter, you know, spray cool. and cook. What do you use? How does it so work? So basically with an egg, you just need to because there's like a technique to cracking an egg because mm -hmm. normal people will just like crack it like yeah. that. But normally, just a flat surface, solid. A flat surface? Flat wow, sur okay. Solid. Yeah, absolutely. So, what you're going to do is, I preferably use butter and oil. Okay. To get the flavor from the butter, but the oil to obviously make up the rest of it. Absolutely, yes. And your temperature needs to go from low and it slowly, gradually bring it up to medium heat. Okay. <clears throat> so, into a bowl. We're going to crack the egg. Okay, and the reason behind that is to obviously prevent you from getting the shells in. Absolutely, I guess. yeah. And another thing is, when you just if you're going to crack your egg right into the pan, it's just going to splash area and make a mess. Okay. So slowly we put it inside the pan. Oh. Wow. So it's automatically just because you've done it like that, it's not spreading across the whole pan like my pan like mine always does at home. So absolutely, yes. Yep. So we're going to season it already. Absolutely, yeah. I prefer seasoning it at first because if you're going to season it when you're done. And then um, it's basically going to be like, you're going to get those granules of salt okay. inside your eggs. Oh yeah, see, so you can make the little crunchy bits on the outside. So do it like this, cooks it through. Yeah. So you get a perfect fried egg, which is obviously, we're gonna do a full English breakfast on the side on the show today. Cool. But you can make a fried egg, and then you get this thing called an, like is it easy, over? An over easy. Over easy. So basically you have a sunny side up, and then you just flip it over, and then that's your, Easy over. Easy over, over easy. <laughs> so obviously, uh, cool. easy uh, over easy, sorry. Yeah. And it totally yeah. depends on obviously how you like your eggs. If you like your yolk to be cooked through, one of the best ways to do that is probably make it an easy over, right? Absolutely, Dan. Fantastic, cool. how easy is that? So That's gonna be coiled onto our plate. Onto our plate over here. And then your staple full English breakfast is done and dusted. This, by the way, if you're ever going to find me a wife one day, if you're ever going to, if I ever have to pay Lobola for a wife one day, this is the breakfast I want on Sundays. Yes. Now, by the way, if you guys want to get all the details on how to make a recipe, you can get it all on your mobile device by SMSing the keyword egg to double three six five zero. It'll cost you one rand fifty, and those free SMSs don't apply. Now, well, there you have it. I hope that you guys can make your own next fried egg with a little bit more confidence. And join us again next week, Monday where Loiso will return to the kitchen and show us how to make the perfect scrambled eggs. How yummy. And the best place to have an egg is in a beautiful home, right? So estate living has become increasingly popular across South Africa for the security, the convenience, and in the right location for the natural beauty as well. The US city of Miami is famous for its gated communities built around the waterways and South Africa has an estate that's created a wonderful community in exactly the same way. However, unlike Miami, it's nowhere near the coast. Instead, you'll find this gem of an estate at the heart of Beersport Damn. For many, the search for a dream home begins at private property. The website boasts a wide variety of estate property, including sought-after options on the Hartbeerspoort Dam and surrounding area, with an easy reach from Johannesburg and Pretoria. One of the must-see spots when visiting the region is the French Toast Coffee Cafe, which was originally built as a movie set and is now a popular spot for visitors and locals to enjoy Parisian-style meals. My name is Paul Kruger. I'm a film producer, and I've been living in Hartiersport for the past 47 years. And the main reason is this is Cape Town by the Dam. Some of the main attractions around Harpiersport is the cableway, obviously, uh, water sports on the dam, there's a snake and animal park, uh, there's two film sets in Harpiersport, Pretville and the French Toast film set where the movie French Toast was filmed. There's also Yasmain, which is a big farm stall, most probably one of the biggest in South Africa, and then a whole lot of restaurants around the dam. I think what makes life in Harpiersport unique is the fact that there's no big buildings. Whenever you look up, you see blue skies. Whenever you look down, you see the dam. And that's quite unique. 
Mahalisberg or the Mahalisberg mountain range is one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world. And the fact that you can have all these hiking routes, escape from Joburg, escape from Pretoria, that's ideal. Who would not like to live here or start their own business here? I think French toast is quite unique because we've brought a few elements out of Paris, out of France, to Hartbeer Sport. For instance, our little mini Eiffel Tower, which is close to 18 meters high. We've built a lock bridge where we've started with one lock and we've over four and a half thousand locks on there. And each lock has got its own story. We've built our own I love you wall where you can see all the languages in the world, uh, the way you say I love you. And there's a lot of photo opportunities. People are taking photos at every single corner on this little premises. Hartbeerspoort is a klein dorpie with a big heart. The Islands Estate, adjoining Pekinwood Golf Estate, is situated on 102 hectares of prime land on the southern banks of the Hartbeerspoort Dam and is aptly referred to as South Africa's Inland Riviera by its residents. My name's Dorian Barker. I moved to the Islands Estate with my family at the beginning of the year, and we're now full-time residents here. I lived in the city before, so this is a nice escape. This Harbeersport Valley is very laid back. It's a, it's a complete lifestyle change, and we're a little bit obsessed with water and boating life and anything to do with water. And I believe the Islands Estate offers us everything that we could anticipate out of an estate. Uh, some of the highlights are probably the security. My children can roam freely around the estate, can visit their friends, cycle without fear of anything happening. Uh, the Islands Estate has got a, a fantastic sports oval right at the top of the estate and we use that for cricket matches, any real sports function that you can think of. It's located directly alongside the Mashie Golf Course. You can practice your swing and you can lose a few balls because everything revolves around water. There's streams, there's all sorts of ponds, in, internal lakes, playground facilities for the younger kids. And of course, for the older guys, we've got the clubhouse and uh, you can go to the clubhouse on your boat. It's a boat is paradise. The estate connects to Hotebeersport Dam through a series of locks. We've got two locks. So the estate is substantially higher than the dam level. We go from one level to the next. And then we're in our yacht basin, which is at dam level. And we can go straight into the dam from there. The canals are filtered through a dedicated wetland. So it's a series of dams and we pump the water through it continuously to create a natural ecosystem. And for that reason, you can see to the bottom of the canals anywhere you go, you can see the fish swimming in it. It's an environmentally friendly estate. If you're looking for a relaxed lifestyle and you have any kind of obsession about water, security, beautiful facilities, this is the estate for you. Developed as a marina, the estate features six kilometers of navigable canals that meander between exquisitely designed waterfront homes. My name is Peter Ann. I'm with Sotheby's International Realty, Hotepia Sport franchise. Been in the business for about six years and love every minute of it. The Islands Estate offers 160 freehold properties. So you've got Ibali Village, which is sectional title, and then you've got your Bay Bridge Canal and Marine Islands. Properties are ranging from 600,000 to 12 million. And then if you're feeling adventurous, you can build. It's one of the few estates around the dam where you get to express your individual taste in your home design to create your dream. What's really great about the island's estate is we're quite central, being close to Pretoria, Krugersdorp, four ways. Mom can stay at home and dad can go through to Joburg. School-wise, we've got Pekinwood College on our doorstep. We've got a shopping centre on the other side of the dam and there's a proposed shopping centre coming at the island's estate gate, so you won't have to go very far. Demographically, I think we cater to a wide variety. Come and be a part of it. The lifestyle, the community, it could be a holiday every day. Hartbeerspoort, or Harties as it's affectionately known, is indeed Gauteng's own holiday town with a friendly community and a big heart. Make sure you too live the lifestyle by finding your dream home on privateproperty.co.za. There's a home for everyone on private property.
We all know how difficult it is to live healthy and active lifestyles while trying to balance the daily demands that go into each day. The truth is that you don't need to run a marathon or climb a mountain to make a difference. All you need to do is start with something small that makes a difference to you personally. Willie's knows this all too well and has decided to create a community of people for people all looking to make that start. So someone who's been taking part in this challenge is our very own Clem. So who better to tell us more about this challenge than him himself? So very cool that you've managed to take this on. What exactly is the campaign? So it is a, a community of people that are looking to be healthier. It's not just about that goal that I want to lose weight and have the six pack and like prance around on the beach with the boys. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about a personal challenge to you, whether it's I want to laugh more, I want to mm. sleep more, I want to be a little more active. It's about literally joining the community where we get to talk to each other and stay motivated and go there and make the start, which is the most important thing. Awesome. And doing it together as a community, I think, is important. Absolutely. That holding each other accountable nature of it all, which is mm. great. So, and then if I want to get involved at home, so what's my role? So you're one of the guys who's taking on the challenge. If I'm at home and I want to take on this challenge, what then? So what you have to do is you go to the Woolworth Starts With Challenge Facebook page okay. and join the event. So what happens is you'll get little notifications once a week or maybe more than that, but little tips and little focuses on what you should kind of try and do this mm -hmm. week. It's as simple as that, and then it's up to you to pick something that you want to actually do, that, that first start for you. Okay, so what did you pick? Like, what was your whole thing? What, I want to know, get yeah. us into the mind and the personal life behind Clay. We always see you in the show cooking and stuff, mm -hmm. but we want to know personally yeah. what motivates you. So I went back to the fighting gym. I thought I put ah. the, the boxing gloves there. We're back in the gym again, and I was, and I got a personal trainer. And I went back to gym again. It's, it's, I'm getting used to it, but yeah. I'm loving it now. I'm so in this routine that if I don't go to gym, if I don't go to fighting, I actually miss it. Mm. Get a little cranky. Also, guys around the office, <laughs> but I need it. And I love it, and it's just become a part of my lifestyle. And I'm feeling good. Yeah. It's not just about feeling fitter. I'm, I'm a lot more energy, and I'm sleeping like a baby. Awesome, and yeah. you're more confident in yourself. I'm sure you like you. You know that you're a well-balanced person, which is really cool. <laughs> and so I think that's inspiring. I know you're going to do boxing because next time I put spice on your on your food in the show, you can just give me one and then... A small one. The relationship okay. will be over like that. <laughs> That's so awesome. So it's really simple, just like that for you at home, obviously. If you want to get involved, there's so many ways to be able to do that. So we want to challenge you at home to take that part and, and take part in this campaign by going to the Woolworth Starts With Facebook page and joining the event. Or if you'd simply like the link to the Starts With Facebook event, this, you can get that sent directly to your mobile device by SMSing the keyword Starts With to 33650 and we'll send you the link. Remember those SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50 and your free SMSs won't apply. So start with making a small change and just stick with it. It's as simple as that and it's the first step to a happier, healthier you. And on that note, it's time for us to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we continue our conversation about how agriculture is making a huge impact as we chat to government. I believe balanced living starts with loving the body I'm in. Starts with. Express
A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express live on SABC3. Now today we've met some incredible individuals who are using agriculture as a way to empower those around them. But in a country with such a high rate of unemployment and ever inflating food costs, food security and accessibility to fresh and healthy food is one of the biggest challenges faced by government. We're joined now by the Chief Director for Food Security, Dr. Jamina Moeng, uh, from whom this reality is a daily challenge. Welcome to our loft. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Danilo, and uh, afternoon to the um, Afternoon Express team, as well as the uh, South African viewers. Afternoon, everybody. It's good to have you with us today. I'm Thank so excited you. to be engaging in this conversation. Where are we at with food accessibility and you know lack of food food accessibility in our country? The country is still having a, a challenge in terms of uh, food access as far as households are concerned. Uh, we get um, statistics that indicate that at least as for 2016, the, according to the General Household Survey, the number of individuals that have uh, inadequate and severe inadequate access to food has declined by about mm. 660. Thousand, which is a lot. So, but we still have a challenge because around 13.7 million individuals in the country are struggling mm. in terms of accessing sufficient and adequate food. And in terms of this, uh, it's people that have to make alternatives and modifications for them to eat on a daily basis. Mm. So the the challenge is quite huge uh, for government, and government yeah. can never do it alone. That is why. Uh, uh, interviews and exposures such as these ones are very important yeah. for government. So, so then it starts with land, I'd imagine, the land availability to yes. be able to produce farming. Yes. How do um, rural communities or individuals get access to land from government to do this work, to be able to produce more food? Absolutely, absolutely. It's a pain for government <laughs> to see any land lying fallow, yeah. be it land in communal areas. <laughs> And be it land in a, 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 a land reform farms, it's actually a, a pain because we know that food is supposed to come from that piece of land, how, no matter how big. Mm. That's why government has got three categories of uh, uh, farmers or producers, that, as we call them. It's your subsistence, which is the farmers that are doing at uh, their backyards, schoolyards, yeah. and so mm -hmm. on, so that all the land uh, it, it gets uh, planted and produces food. So we have the, we have the subsistence producers. We we have the smallholder producers, we have the commercial sector. All those sectors, are, all the three sectors are equally important because mm -hmm. they play a vital role in each one's area. Okay. Your smallholder is the person that will be producing mainly for knowing that even though they're going to eat, they still want to sell food mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that the local economies of an area are also uh, food secure. Because food security and food insecurity, in fact, is a, is a problem for, for South yeah. Africa and the, the world at okay. large. So we know that there's a problem. And I think the big question always led towards government is going to be, what is the strategic plan? So what is the 5, 10-year, 20-year big strategic plan for, for government to try and solve these issues? Um, government has got various plans. Uh, there's short-term plans, there's medium-term, there's long-term plans. We have the National Development Plan. That's the long-term long plan. We have the Constitution, which has also been there for the, 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 since 1996. Mm -hmm. That wants to ensure that people have the right to access food. So those are all government plans. But based on those, then departments come up with their specific uh, mm -hmm. plans to, to ensure that we all meet the bigger targets of the, uh, uh, the country. And in terms of that, we have, uh, we have received approval from the cabinet in 2013 for the National Policy on Food and Nutrition Security. And now we're working on the National Food and Nutrition Security Plan. You will hear that I'm saying food and nutrition security. Because yeah, they're not, they're food, not, they're not yeah, exactly. separate things. Food alone, <coughs> no matter how bulky, is not uh, going to help us mm. solve malnutrition, exactly. stunting, and so on. It's good quality but food in the right good, soils. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. why we have the nutrition aspect as, 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 that, as such. So awesome. the, 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 food, uh, the National Food and Nutrition Security Plan is involving about six departments, national mm. departments, all the, nine, all the nine provinces' departments, 
and um, those mm. uh, departments are also having partners. Your United yeah. Nations, the yeah. Food and Agriculture Organization, the, the World Food Program, mm. and others, so that we tackle the problem as a collective. Mm. Stunning. Doctor, thank you very much for coming to share this information. It's good to know the government is proactive mm. and trying to do something to be able to put these plans in place. All the details for you at home will be available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. And for all you Winner Home fans, Team Habitats, Brad and Abia will be appearing live on Trending SA tonight. That's going to be happening at 9.30 on SABC3, so make sure that you guys tune in for that. And perhaps this could go a way little sort of strap saying underneath it. could say, um, obviously, underneath that show. So make sure you guys tweet uh, to, uh, tonight at 9.30 as they get onto Trending SA. Um, also, tomorrow, don't forget that we've got a weekly cook-along coming up, uh, and uh, so that we guys can obviously cook live with us on the show. Find all the details on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Former Yo TV presenter and musician Rory Sang will be with us. So make sure you tune in 4 p.m. on SABC3. Have a good night and happy eating. Bye. Time is running out for our winner home design duos and time is running out for you to stand a chance to win the largest prize on South African television. Your choice of one of the three completed homes at the magnificent Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate in the south of Joburg. If you win, would you choose Team VC's monochromatic bachelor pad or Team House and Leisure's curated interiors or Team Habitat's Razzle Dazzle Style? Hello! The homes come complete with finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, bathroom fixtures by Giverit and Grower and appliances by Grindig. You have less than one week left to enter as the competition closes on Sunday, the 29th of October. So for all the details on how to enter, go to privateproperty.co.za and click on the Winner Home link. And also, don't forget to watch Winner Home on Afternoon Express every Friday at 4 p.m. on SABC3. The stage is yours. for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Afternoon Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.